digest on AA TV. Remember, you can drop your comments and your questions on our social media pages and Facebook and YouTube at the Association of African Universities, respectively. I'm your host, Iwa Joan Ikuya. After this week, we get to meet our guests. The Association of African Universities, in partnership with the All African Students Union and Al Azhar University Egypt calls on African universities to participate in the first African Universities Olympics theme uniting African universities through sports and recreation, mapping out strategies to achieve the Africa we want. The disciplines include basketball, football, long jump, triple jump, shot put, javelin, sprints, and a whole lot more. The teams will be formed according to the five geopolitical regions of Africa, namely West, East, South, North, and Central Africa. Venue, Al Azhar University, Cairo, Egypt. Date, 14th to 18th of March, 2019. Register now on blog.aau.org and also stand the chance of visiting the pyramids of Giza and other interesting sites in Cairo. For more information, visit blog.aau.org or call plus 233-2432-98464. Welcome back. Joining us in our studio today is our regular guest, Dr. Yude Otego from the Lucal Health Medical Center at East Legon. And we'll be looking at the PAP test and the HPV which is connected to the cervical screening and cancer screening. Welcome, Doctor. Thank you. How's your day been? It's been fine, thank you. Today we'll be looking at the pap test and the HPV. We we'll want to look at issues relating to cervical cancer and how we can sensitize our viewers yes. on some of the issues. So I was, what is pap test? So the pap test is a screening test okay. and it's designed to detect any changes on the cervix that could lead to cervical cancer. Okay. Um, cervical cancer is something that is preventable okay. and the primary ways or primary way I should say in which to prevent it is by getting the pap test which can detect these changes at an early stage before they have a chance to get to cervical cancer. Okay. And just to quickly recap briefly anatomy in case people are hearing the word cervix for the first oh, time, yeah, 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 sure. the cervix is the opening to the uterus or okay. the womb and it's located at the top of the vagina. Okay, okay so how often should um, this pap test be done? So the pap test is something that is recommended at certain intervals based on which age category you fall into. So in general, it's recommended that the pap test be started by age 21. Okay. So if you're age 21 to 29, you should have the pap test done every three years. Okay. There's an additional test, the HPV test, and we'll talk more about HPV okay. momentarily. Yeah, yeah. Um, if you are age 30 and beyond, then you should have the pap test with an HPV test, okay. and that should be done every five years. Those okay. are the current recommendations. Okay. And we'll get into a little bit more detail as to why, why yeah, the yeah, HPV yeah. is recommended at a certain age range yeah, yeah, yeah. as opposed to the younger ages as we go on in the discussion. Yeah. So, I, so when you say um, 21 years, it should be done within three years? So but the pap test alone yeah, every test. three years. So a 21-year-old lady doesn't need the HPV no. screening. Okay, no. just the pap test is enough. Exactly. Okay, so before I I want to go for a pap test as a lady, as a woman, how should I prepare myself? Do I need to do some shaving or some things? That's actually a good question. Yeah. In general, you don't need to shave or do anything externally because okay. the cervix is located inside the vagina. Okay. However, it is advisable, although it's not an absolute requirement, okay. that you avoid doing certain things that may alter the test results. Because again, this is a screen, so it's looking for any cervical abnormality. Mm -hmm. So one thing you want to avoid is any douching. Douching is something 
wear. It's, a, it's something you could usually buy or you can use at home. It's just flushing the vagina with water or sometimes other types of solutions. I hear it's a lot, douching, douching. Exactly. And, and they say it's actually not recommended. It is not it. recommended at yeah. all for various reasons. Okay. Um, but as it relates to the pap test, it could change the way the cervical cells appear okay. and so you want to avoid that. Another thing which you may want to avoid is sexual activity prior to the um, pap test, and that's just because obviously it can alter the way the cells appear because there's been, I wouldn't say trauma per se, that sounds a bit harsh, yeah. but sometimes that can alter the way the cells appear on the cervix. Like I said, it's not a hard and fast rule, mm -hmm. okay. um, but those are the general things that we recommend. A lot of women also ask if they are on their period or their menses, can they still get the pap okay. test done? Um, I will say that with the advances now in the way cervical screening is performed and the way the pap test is processed, usually they are able to filter out any blood or any debris okay. from the actual cervical cells. Okay. So in general, being on your menses should not stop you from okay. being able to get your pap, pap test. test. So for example, you may have your wellness visit scheduled and then your menses comes, comes on unexpectedly on, yeah. or maybe yeah. you miscalculated on your calendar yeah, you didn't calendar. realize yeah, see, that you'd yeah. be on your menses at the time that yeah. you scheduled for your visit. In those cases, as long as you're not bleeding excessively heavily hey, really, to okay. the point where it may interfere with being able to get the uh, sample should, adequately, yeah, yeah. it should not cause you to cancel your appointment or not get the pap test. Um, some women, though, feel uncomfortable getting an exam when they're yeah, on the menses, yeah. so if they choose to reschedule based on that reason, then that's it's, fine. It's fine. But okay. there's nothing that says that if you're on your menses and your bleeding is light or moderate, that you can't get the pap it's test. Like, you still should be able okay. to get it with the current way that the pap tests are done. Oh, okay. Yes. So it's not going to interfere in any way with the results? No, or... no. Or if you're not sure and you want to come to your visit anyway, generally I'll tell women to still come. Okay. Let me assess if the flow is too heavy. Okay. If at the time I see the flow is too heavy and I don't think an adequate sample of cells will be obtained because of the heaviness of the okay. flow, then I'll usually say, okay, let me do the remainder of your wellness checkup Check. and I'll defer the pap smear on, or pap test. I keep saying pap smear. Yeah, yeah. It's the okay. same thing. Okay. Pap so, test, pap smear. They are the same. They are the same. Terms. It's okay. just a different term. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, okay. But if I see that it wouldn't be useful um, to get the pap test okay. because of the heaviness of the flow, then I'll say, I'll do your wellness exam but I'll defer the PAP until after the menses the has menses. completed. Oh, okay. Yes. okay, you mentioned HPV and you said we'll be talking about <laughs> that. So what is HPV? So HPV stands for Human Papilloma Virus. Okay. And this is a group of viruses that are classified by different types. They are numbered. So 6, 11, 16, 18. Um, there are more than 100 different types of HPV. Um, they're classified into different categories. The first category is the low-risk types of HPV, and those generally cause genital warts. Mm -hmm. um, warts are just growths in the genital warts. area. Okay. Okay. The high-risk is the second category, and high-risk HPV is most relevant to our discussion with the pap test and cervical okay. cancer, cancer screening. screening. And the reason that is is because we know that high-risk HPV is the cause of cervical cancer. Oh, okay. And so HPV in general uh, refers to low risk and high risk types of HPV, but for the purposes of the pap test and cervical cancer, we're concerned mostly with the high with risk. The high risk. Exactly. Okay. Okay, then um, what are some of the sim symptoms of this um, HPV? If, what should I, when I see these changes in my body or my reproductive, what should I look to forward for as a symptom of HPV? So in general, HPV does not cause symptoms. Okay. That's in general. There are however, no symptoms. However, okay. if you want to be specific to the low risk and high risk types, Okay. Like I said, low-risk HPV types can cause genital warts. It does not mean that just because you have a low-risk HPV infection that you will automatically get genital warts. Okay. But if you notice in the genital area that all of a sudden you have a firm, small growth, like a bump, 
in anywhere in a genital area where the hair bearing area is on the mons or anywhere in the vulva. We talked about some of yeah, these the turns vulva, the last yeah, episode. The episode um, yeah. Or even in the back area around the anus. Okay. Um, there can be a hard, firm growth there. Sometimes it may itch, sometimes it won't. There's usually no pain but it may be there for a long time and some women may not even notice no, it as anything, anything out of the ordinary. Yeah, they may yeah, think yeah. it's just a mole or a skin tag. But in certain cases, sometimes you may notice, okay, maybe a few months later, there's three yeah, instead of one. Wow. Or maybe time goes on and it seems like they keep growing. growing if you notice time. something like that, then you should get that checked out because those could be genital warts, okay? okay. So those would be the symptoms or signs of low-risk HPV. HPV. But sometimes you may be infected with low-risk HPV and not know at all. If that's the case, you don't really need to worry to unless worry. you okay. notice anything okay. out of the ordinary. Okay. Okay. With high-risk HPV, there are generally no symptoms. Wow. So... Then that's, that's quite risky. It's, and that highlights why it's important to have, to have your, your wellness checkup check and the pap test in particular. So what I mean when I say there's no symptoms is that there may be a high risk HPV infection and you won't notice that there's an abnormal discharge. You may not see any uh, abnormal bleeding. You may not have any pain. You may not have anything that says I might be infected with HPV, okay? It's a virus that actually affects the cells by entering them and starting to cause the cells to grow abnormally. But the process occurs very slowly over the course of several years, wow. okay? Long -term. Long term. So on average, when you're talking about precancerous and actual cancerous Cancers. change of yeah. the cervix, yeah. for healthy people, or healthy women, I should say, it generally takes up to 10 years for wow. cervical cancer to actually so develop. Wow. And so during that time, there may be an HPV infection of the cervical cells. The cells may start to grow abnormally. As time goes on, there may be pre-cancer that develops and then eventually cervical cancer. But most of the time, symptoms of high-risk HPV infection don't develop until you already have cervical cancer. And so this relates back to the importance of cervical cancer screening and that when you go for your routine checkup and you get the pap test, you get the uh, speculum inserted, the cervix may appear normal, but we get the pap smear That's anyway. Right. Yeah. It's yeah. when it's sent to the lab for analysis, then they can see, okay, number one, is there HPV present or not? And number two, is there any abnormality to the cervical cells that can be seen that would warrant further investigation, investigation. to assess if there's precancerous changes, changes taking place? So these virus, how do they... How, how do they get in? How is it got in? <laughs> <laughs> so HPV is generally transmitted by skin-to-skin -skin contact. Okay. So in the case of low-risk HPV types, when, you come, when your skin comes in contact with someone's skin that has an HPV-infected cells, then that's how it's passed. Okay. And you know, you, again, you may not see any warts on another person, but the HPV infection may be there. Um, with high-risk HPV types, those are sexually transmitted. And so through sexual activity is how the HPV is transmitted from person to person and how in women it can affect the cervical cells and so start that to cause means changes. The, um, the male, the men, they yes. have the HPV, yes. they, you can get it from them? Yes. And can you carries. also give it to them? Yes. Oh, I yes. See. So any of the cells that are infected in the general, mm -hmm. genital area okay. can transmit whether it's male to female or female to male. I see. Yes. Okay. So what's, what's the um, importance of this? Um, HPV to the cervical um, screening test or cervical cancer screening? So basically, uh, I think to answer that is best yeah. to define what a screening test, test. is. Okay. So when you do the pap test, it's a screen. It doesn't diagnose and say, you have cervical cancer. Okay. But it's more so just something that raises um, your suspicion that, okay, there may be some Something. changes there okay. that warrant additional testing or additional investigation. Okay. The significance of the HPV along with the pap test is that when HPV is detected in the cervical cells, okay. even if the cells themselves appear normal, so you can have a result on a pap smear that says the cells are normal, normal. but the HPV is present, then instead of, for example, 
me telling you that, okay, well, you should come back in three years to have your pap smear Pap's repeated, smear then, yeah. I may say, come back next year okay. and have it repeated then. Okay. The reason that is, is because, yes, HPV can cause abnormal cells to develop, but it doesn't always occur. Uh -huh. One important thing which I do want to highlight, and I probably should have mentioned this earlier, earlier. is that most young, healthy people will get rid of the HPV on their own without doing anything, okay? especially between ages 20 to 29. Okay. And it's because just like any other infection, okay. when you catch a cold or if you get a cut and it gets infected, your body has the ability to heal it up because of your immune system. Okay, okay, okay. So the immune system can detect the virus as something foreign and it can work to clear it and get rid of it on its own. And so if you're young, if you're healthy, if you don't have any condition that has compromised your immune system, then most people will clear the HPV on their own. On their own, okay. Exactly. I see. Well, after the break, we'll continue with um, the how we can get it tested and what um, screening and how often it should be done. Okay. All right, viewers, if you're just tuning in, this is Ladies Digest on AU TV. You can drop your comments, as I said earlier, and your questions. Even the, um, the programs or the topics we've treated early on, you can always drop your comments and your questions, and we'll try as much as possible to address them. You can send your questions to Association of African Universities on our Facebook and our YouTube page. We'll go on a short break and we'll be back. The Association of African Universities, AAU, under the patronage of His Excellency Abdel Fattah Saeed Hussein Khalil El Sisi, President of Egypt, and Ahmed Mohammed Ahmed El Tayeb, the Grand Imam of Al Azhar, presents the AAU's Conference of Rectors, Vice Chancellors, and Presidents of African Universities from 8th to 11th of July 2019. Theme Role of Higher Education Institutions in Promoting the Continental Education Strategy, CESA 1625. Call for papers have been announced for the following sub themes Promoting Science and Mathematics Education. Expanding technical and vocational education and training opportunities. Revitalizing and expanding tertiary education, research and innovation. Promoting peace education and conflict prevention at all levels of education. Improving management of education systems and harnessing the capacity of ICT to improve access and quality of education and training. Promoting mobility through harmonization of quality assurance and accreditation systems and identifying new directions to improve the management of education in Africa. Submit your paper abstracts of not more than two pages online at www.aau.org forward slash subs forward slash abstracts. Deadline for submission is 15th March 2019. For further details on Corvip 2019, please visit events.aau.org forward slash Corvip. mentioned the age group which can we should or are eligible to go for the practice or who should go and check for practice if a lady like a 21 year old lady isn't sexually active does she need to go for this test the recommendation is that she should have the pap test however your doctor can tailor whether or not you have the pap test done based on how comfortable the woman is with having it done. Mm -hmm. So like I mentioned, the way in which the pap test is performed is you have to insert an instrument, instrument. an instrument called the speculum, speculum. into the vagina. Yeah. For women who have not been sexually active before, there is a thin membrane Lining. of skin mm -hmm. that covers the vaginal opening, not completely, but partially covers the vaginal opening called the hymen, Lining. which remains intact in the absence of sexual activity, okay. in general. Yeah. Um, so if the hymen is still there to a large extent, it may be a bit more uncomfortable for that woman, regardless of the age, not just 21, but One, maybe 30 yeah, or yeah, whatever yeah, age yeah. the, the woman may be. If the hymen is still mainly intact, yeah. then it may be more uncomfortable for her to be able to tolerate the insertion and opening of the speculum for the doctor to be able to see the cervix adequately. Mm -hmm. So in that instance, I personally don't 
reinforce that, oh, it must be done, you know, regardless. But then it can still put it at, <laughs> don't you think it can still put it at risk? Well, not necessarily because in general, remember we said that high-risk HPV is sexually transmitted. transmitted okay. And so in the absence of the woman having had actual sexual intercourse, the likelihood that oh, she, has she has HPV or even further to have HPV related cervical changes is fairly low. Okay. Now granted, maybe she hasn't been fully sexually active in terms of having actual sexual intercourse, um, like actual vaginal pe penetration, okay. but maybe she's engaged in other sexual activity, okay. like you know having oral sex performed on her yeah. or if there's been manual stimulation and things like that. But even in that instance, I wouldn't necessarily force for her to have okay. the pap test done okay. if she's very uncomfortable. Um, um. If there's anything in the woman's history that makes me concerned that I need to see so, okay, the cervix or need to get a sample from there, then the, in certain select instances, I may offer that we can actually go to the theater or operating room okay. and just do a mild sedation, not full anesthesia, but just do a mild sedation so that I can actually go in and get the sample. Okay. But, but that rarely is necessary. Okay. And, and with that, it won't interfere, like it won't make, it won't tear the hymen or anything? In general, there might be a Any? widening of the hymen. I mean, there are different size speculums. I think okay. that bears oh, yeah, specula, yeah. that's the yeah, proper term. The, the two, uh, um, okay. There are different sizes. And so and you sometimes mentioned, so you mentioned plastic and um, and metal. metal, but for so both there are different sizes. sizes but okay. there's a wider range of sizes with the metal specula. Okay. So in those instances, sometimes I'll choose to use a very narrow or very short, short. Okay. speculum in the office. At least I'll try it. And I also usually talk the woman through and try and encourage some breathing, relaxation yeah. techniques. <laughs> and usually with that, using a small, there are actually child-sized speculums oh, as well, because in certain instances you may need to do that exam on a child, child. but that's okay. outside of the scope of this discussion. discussion. But usually with using the appropriate size speculum and usually just educating the woman and kind of talking her through the exam, in most cases, I am able to do the exam on women, even those who have not been sexually active before. But if it's the case that she still can't tolerate it, I usually won't force it if the history doesn't suggest a strong need, need to get okay, the test, okay. or if I have, a, or the history doesn't suggest a strong likelihood that she might have um, either an HPV okay. infection or some type of abnormality in the vagina or on the cervix. Okay, okay. so are there certain groups of women yeah. that should go for this test and if so why that should or should not go yes, for Yes, should them. or should not go for this Okay, yeah. so in general, like we said earlier, the general screening recommendations based on the age, age ranges, 21 to 29, 20. and then 30 and over, mm -hmm. those should guide how often you go for your go pap for test. Your Any woman in those age ranges should have a pap test done. Mm -hmm. However, there are certain groups of women that should not have the pap test done any longer. Okay. And so, in general, if a woman is over age 65, she can stop having the pap test done, but only under two conditions. Oh, okay. So the first condition is if you're over age 65 and you have a negative pap history. So what that means is your last three pap tests, let's assume they weren't, they weren't done with HPV. Okay. If your last three pap tests in a row were negative okay. and the most were normal. normal and the most recent test was done within the past five years okay. then you no longer need to get the pap test done okay. it does not mean that you shouldn't see your gyn anymore okay, okay. Yeah, I see. <laughs> because okay. there are still things that we check, check here. you know and there are certain gynecological conditions that increase in likelihood as you get older, older. and as okay. you get past the age of yeah, menopause yeah, yeah. So, with regard to the pap test, the screen for cervical cancer in particular, if your last peep, three pap smears in a row were, were negative, normal. and the most recent one was within the past three, uh, five years, yes. then you don't have to have the pap test, test anymore. Even while you go for your GYN. Exactly, visit. exactly. Yeah. But it's important that you mention that because when you do come for your GYN visit, you might ask, well, if you're not going to get the pap smear anymore, then what are you coming, coming for? for. <laughs> well, we still do the general exam, which I went through in detail yeah, yeah, in the last episode. episode. So just to briefly recap, 
We do check the thyroid gland, we check for swollen glands, the breast exam in particular. The incidence of breast cancer increases with age. Age is the biggest risk factor. And so we do a breast exam, make sure that there's no masses, we order your mammogram for you. Um, with regard to the genital area in particular, I still look at the vaginal area. I still need to look inside the vagina. I still need to look at the cervix. I still need to feel for the internal organs just to make sure that there's no abnormalities Abnormality. detected during those exams. Oh. But as for the actual pap test, test where I take the swab of the cervical cells, that is not necessary if that first condition is it's met. Easy. The other condition um, under which the women age 65 and older don't need a pap, pap test, test any longer yeah. is if they've had what's called co-testing. I mentioned that women age 30 and over get the pap smear with the HPV yeah. every five years. Yeah. That's called co-testing, co where you're checking the cells yeah. and the HPV, HPV at the same time. Yeah. So if you've had co-testing, two of them in a row that have been normal, and the most recent test has been within five years, yes. then you can also stop having the pap test. Even within the age range of 30? No. Okay. Only at those, these three. two conditions only apply over oh, age 65. 65. Yes. Okay. 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 Now, there's another group of women that also um, can stop having the pap test, and those are women who have had a surgery called a hysterectomy. Hysterectomy is a surgery done to remove the womb from the woman's body. And there's many, many different reasons why that procedure may be done. Mm -hmm. The most common in this region will be because of fibroids, okay. okay? But with the hysterectomy, like I said, the cervix is the opening to the uterus yeah. or the womb. Yeah. And so in general, when you do a hysterectomy, often you are also removing the cervix. Okay. So if you no longer have a cervix, cervix. then oh. You don't need There's to screen for cervical yeah, cancer. cancer, okay? The cervix is in there. Okay. Exactly. Okay. Um, the only circumstance under which there's an exception to that women with hysterectomy, and this is regardless of any age, even if they're under age 65. Okay. Okay. In general, if you had your cervix and your uterus removed, you don't need a pap smear, except if you had the hysterectomy performed because you have had cervical cancer. Because exactly. Okay. So one of the reasons to have a hysterectomy is because you've been yeah. diagnosed with cervical, cervical cancer. cancer. And so if the treatment that you have opted for or the treatment that was required to okay. cure you Sorry. was hysterectomy okay. and your cervix was removed obviously because of cervical cancer, after you have the hysterectomy you still need to get pap tests. And the reason why is because once you've progressed to the point of cervical cancer and you've had a hysterectomy for that, we need to check the top of the vagina, which was attached to the cervix, the cervix okay. to continually monitor if any cancerous changes grows there, um, so or any cancerous changes grow a there. tendency that it can come back. Exactly. So okay. cancer is uncontrolled growth yeah. of any bodily cell. So. It's just uncontrolled growth. And so usually at that stage, the adjacent cells can be affected as well. And the only way to know if the cancer either is returned or is persisting in those ad adjacent tissues or nearby tissues is to continually do monitoring of those cells. So the top of the vagina in women who have had a hysterectomy for cervical cancer, cancer. will get a pap test. Oh, yes, but so that's an exception. Exception, which is not very common, I think. It's it varies. The incidence of cervical <laughs> cancer varies yeah, based yeah, on yeah. different regions, regions of the world. It's true, so it's true. I can't say it's not necessarily it's, common. It, it depends on true, where you are. Where you are. Yes. That's true. So what are um, HPV vaccines and who should get these vaccines? Okay, so in a vaccine is an injection which is designed to protect or prevent a certain infection. So the HPV vaccine is designed to prevent HPV infections. Okay. Um, in general, the recommendations for the HPV vaccine are that it should be given to boys and girls. It can be given as early as age 9 and can be given up to age 26. Um, some people ask why would you give that type of vaccine to a 9-year-old because you wouldn't expect that person be sexually active. But the key with the HPV vaccines is that they are most effective when you give them before a person initiates yes. any sexual activity. That's when you can um, confer the most protection to you know, girls, boys, and young men and women. 
Um, the interval at which the vaccine is given depends on the age at which the vaccine was initiated or started. Okay. So in general, if you start the um, series before age 14 or 15, I believe, then you would only get two vaccines given over the course of six to 12 months. Okay. If you start the vaccine series later, then you would get three injections also over the course of six to 12 months. Six to 12 months. Right. But the doctor will explain specifically. I mean, that's a little bit of a lot of detail just to answer the question of, you know, the vaccine. But in general, it's designed to try and protect. It's a preventive measure to protect yeah. against HPV infection. And with, in, still with the preventive measures, if, if I've been vaccinated, do I still need to go for the PAP test or yes. the HPV test? Yes, you still need to get the PAP test. And the reason why is because, like I mentioned earlier, there are well over 100 different types of HPV. <laughs> the two vaccines that are available do not cover every single type of HPV. So for example, there's one on the market, which is the oldest one, it's called Gardasil. And that covers four HPV types in particular. Two low risk types, type six and 11, that can cause genital warts and two high risk types, type 16 and type 18, which can cause cervical cancer. Okay. The reason why they chose those, those four particular HPV, HPV types is because those are the most common types okay. of HPV that are identified in most cases of genital warts and most cases of precancer okay. or cancer of the cervix. So in targeting those, you're more likely to reduce the HPV infection in most people. So this is this is just um, out um, a question, not really a, a personal question. What do you think is the reason for this um, prevailing spread of the um, this cancer disease? Well, I'll mention one additional thing, which okay. I want to add on to the question about the um, types of HPV and okay. whether you still need to get the Pap test. Yes. Um, the reason why I mentioned the Gardasil and the particular types of HPV that it covers is that. Let's say you've gotten vaccinated for those. Okay. So you're covered against those four types okay. that are covered by the Gardasil. You may happen to acquire a different type, type of high-risk okay. HPV yeah. that could cause cervical cancer. Like let's say 45 is one. That's also identified with cervical cancer. So in that case, you're not protected, protected. and you still could go on to have abnormal cells cell. develop yeah. on the cervix and then go on to develop cervical cancer if you don't get your screening. screening. So I just wanted to make sure I mentioned yeah, yeah, that yeah, so we don't yeah, lose yeah, sight yeah. of the fact yeah. that yes, there are vaccines, but they don't cover all types all of HPV. Types. So you mentioned there are over 100 exactly. and we have for just four. So exactly. you need to go for your regular pap test. Exactly. Okay, as I asked earlier, yes. what do you think is the prevailing and spread of, for, of this cancer um, or HPV? So the main reason for increasing spread, or I shouldn't say increasing, but the main factors Factor. that can increase, increase the spread of HPV is just unprotected sexual activity um, and also having multiple sexual partners. Those, in fact, are the main two factors, factors that cause the transmission of HPV. You had asked earlier about the men if they are carriers. They're carriers of the HPV. They will not know, especially when it comes to high-risk HPV, because I said high-risk HPV in general does not cause symptoms, mm -hmm. and men don't have a cervix, so there's no pap test yeah, for men. Yeah, so <laughs> I wanted to ask that. Yes, yeah, there's, there's no, no pap test. test for men, and, um, and they're carriers. They can be carriers. Like I said, most young, healthy people will get HPV in their lifetime, actually. Mm -hmm. There's estimates that say anywhere from three out of four sexually active men and women may be exposed to HPV, HPV in their lifetime. Yeah. But the good news is that most of those people will also clear the virus on its mm -hmm. own. So when you think of it, it's not really effective necessarily to have a specific test for men for, for men. HPV okay. because even if they're carriers at a certain in, point, a it point will, will likely clear, yeah. okay? Yeah. Yeah. However, it's still important to be um, mindful of the ways in which you can reduce the chances that you'll get it, knowing that there are no symptoms and knowing that most men will not know that they have high-risk HPV. Mm -hmm. And so number one is, you know, being selective in terms of the number of lifetime sexual partners that you have. If you know that a certain infection is sexually transmitted, the more different partners that you have, 
the higher the chance Chances that of, at any yeah. particular instance with any particular person, mm -hmm. you could be exposing yourself yeah. to high-risk HPV. That's number one. Number two is, you know, condom use, safe yeah. sex practices. Um, the condom use is important. It's not 100% because remember I also said at the beginning that HPV is skin-to-skin -skin contact mm -hmm. as well as yeah. sexual activity. activity. So the condom only covers a certain portion of the man activity. or even in female condoms, which there are those, it only covers a certain portion mm -hmm. of the female as well. Mm -hmm. And so yes, it is protective and they definitely should be encouraged and should be used, but it's not 100%. Mm -hmm. Even in terms of limiting your sexual partners or the number of sexual partners that you have, it's also important to, important to know your partner's so sexual, sexual history yeah, as well. Yeah. You know, so it's important to have these conversations or at least to be aware and know that if you have a partner who maybe you know in the past has had many other partners um, or if unfortunately you find that maybe they have other partners in addition to you, you know, you may want to reassess that relationship <laughs> because every time you could be exposing yourself to, you know, HPV infection among other far more harmful sexually transmitted yeah, infections. Yeah. Not, not HPV. Not just HPV. HPV. Yes. Yeah. In, so in terms of um, accuracy, can I go for have an, a, an HPV test done and be negative or come out with a negative result but still have it? Yes, that okay. can be the case. Okay. And that also um, speaks to the screening aspects of the PAP and HPV tests. Okay. Like I said earlier, um, with screening, it's just a red flag, basically, okay. to say, look a little closer, there may be something here that could, be ca that could cause a problem in the okay. future. Yeah. So with all screening tests, there could be false results. There could be a false negative result, which is what you are asking That's in particular it, yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. So for example, the test will say your cervical cell, your pap test could say your cervical cells are negative, negative. or the HPV test could say the HPV is absent, Absence. but in fact, it's present. Yeah. The way to overcome that is with coming for your routine wellness visits. Like I highlighted earlier, it takes many years for cervical cancer to develop. So at any point along, let's say one year, three years, five years, if the initial test did not detect the HPV. Maybe when you have your repeat test at three years, mm -hmm. the PAP will say, oh, there's some abnormality there. Maybe we should get the HPV test. Or if you're over age 30 and you have the PAP and the HPV co-testing co done, then maybe when you come for your three-year check, then yeah, at that point, point you'll see the HPV is mm -hmm. there. Even let's say you come and the PAP will say, initial PAP will say the test is negative. Um, but in fact, there's actually precancer there. Precancerous cells are not cancer yet, and they also can be prevented to, pre to progressing to cervical cancer. cancer. Okay. So there's many points along you know, uh, a certain time frame where you can catch things at an early stage um, and be able to prevent the development Design of cervical curing. cancer. Exactly, even if you have, let's say, a false negative test. There can be false positive tests as well. So what that means is, you have a positive test result. Your pap says, there's abnormal cells there. Or the HPV says, the, H, the HPV test says, the HPV is present. But in fact, there's no abnormal cells or the HPV it is, is negative. Okay. And so depending on the woman's particular circumstance, the specific results, either you may have additional testing done. Um, and if the additional testing comes out and says, oh, well, in fact, there wasn't anything there, then maybe in that instance, instead of my telling you, okay, everything's clear, come back in three years, I may just say, you know, just to be on the safe side, Science. even okay. though our additional testing said nothing, nothing. was there, yeah. let's be cautious, and instead of coming back in three or five years, yeah. come back next year, next and year. I'll, let's just do another swab another so we can swab. be, I mean, exactly. By then, it would have been, you, could, you can tell if some cells have been, man have started manifesting. Exactly, exactly. So when, and again, all yeah. of this is kind of tailored to the event individual women. We're talking in very general terms here, yeah, so I don't want yeah. to give the impression like, you know, this is absolutely how it is every time for every woman. Every woman. That's why yeah. it's important to see your doctor in general and ask certain questions specific questions. to your particular case. Because in general, there are guidelines that can dictate on a case-by-case -case basis, circumstance-by-circumstance basis, what the appropriate follow-up should be. 
So talking about the senior doctor, can it be done anyway? This the HPV test or the pap smear, can you go to any hospital? Can I just walk into any hospital and say, I want to get a pap smear done or an HPV test done? Anywhere where they have a gynecologist, okay. Okay. <laughs> they should be able to offer you a pap test. Okay. HPV testing in particular is a relatively new um, activity, I should okay. say. Okay. Um, within the past five to ten years, we've been checking more often. Okay. Um, some centers may not offer the HPV test, but I would say in general, most places should be able to offer it. It's not the hospital itself per se or the doctor themselves that um, runs the test. It's really the lab facility okay, that they use okay. and whether or not facility. they have the capability to run those particular tests. Okay. But I would say in most places, both the PAP test and the HPV test should be able to be run without any difficulty. Okay. Yes. Okay, well, during the week, I was discussing with some people and I got two questions. Sure. And I want us to address it before we call it a day for this program. One says, does the cervical screening apply to me if I have been through menopause? I know you talked a bit about it, but I wanted to just address it. Yes. Yeah. You should still get cervical okay. cancer screening okay. if you've gone through menopause. and. The average age of menopause for most women is around age 51 to 52, okay. on average. Some women go through menopause later, and menopause, just to make sure everyone understands, menopause is when your periods have stopped for more than a year and you're no longer able to reproduce ovulation, all of that has stopped. Um, so in general, the average age is around age 51 to 52 for most women. Um, but the cutoff age for when we had discussed yeah, the yeah, PAP yeah, should 65. stop should be 65, right. yeah. assuming certain conditions are met. Amazing. And so, yes, if you've gone through menopause, you should still Ooh. get your PAP tests done at the recommended intervals until your doctor tells you that it's okay to stop. It's okay, okay. Yes. And the second one, should I have a PAP test in my pregnant state? So, yes, okay. in general, um, when you become pregnant, when you go for your initial prenatal visit, you usually will have a pap test done. Okay, okay, okay. Remember the pap smear is taken from the outside, outside of the cervix, yeah. so in no way does it interfere Interfer with the pregnancy at all. Okay. But it's important to get that done because earlier we had talked about um, women with or we talked about HPV and how it can be cleared by your yeah, immune, the system. immune system. Yeah. A lot of women don't know this, but when you're pregnant, your immune system is suppressed. It's designed to be that way because you are growing a baby that not only has your own body's DNA and cells, etc., but also a foreign person, and I say foreign just foreign using body. quotation marks. Yeah. <laughs> Your partner yeah. has okay. also contributed okay. their okay. DNA, etc., okay. which I your see. body will recognize as foreign. Oh, and so yeah. nature has designed That's things adaptive. such that it's adaptive. So yeah. we designed things such that your immune system is suppressed a bit yeah. to allow the developing fetus or baby to grow yeah. safely. And so because pregnancy is an immunocompromised state, meaning your immune system is lowered mm -hmm. a bit, it's important for us to do the pap test just to check and see, okay, are there any abnormalities there that we need to keep an eye on during the pregnancy? In general, if there are any cervical abnormalities detected with the pap smear, as long as they are mild, and we'll get into the different classifications of the types of abnormalities okay, in the next in the episode, next episode yeah. but assuming that they are mild, in general, you will not have any invasive or very involved testing done during the pregnancy again speaks to the fact that HPV causes changes if they cause changes over many years. So over the course of a nine to 10 month pregnancy, if you have mild abnormalities even on the cervix or even if HPV is pregnant, it's unlikely that there's gonna be any significant change during the pregnancy. And you can go ahead and deliver and then afterwards we reassess the cervix mm -hmm. and then if additional testing is needed, then we go from there, yes. Okay. So before we end, do you have any last words for us? Yes. <laughs> It is very, very important yeah. to get your pap test done and your routine wellness exam. Um, again, like I said last episode, many, many women think or have the feeling that if they feel fine, they don't have symptoms of anything, mm -hmm. then they don't need to go. But prevention, prevention is, prevention is the main aim 
um, and the main thing to highlight when it comes to wo women's wellness. Cervical cancer, like I said, is completely preventable and there are many stages over the course of many years at which if there's any changes present that could lead to cervical cancer, um, that we can catch it early mm -hmm. and treat it early, or at least catch mm -hmm. it early and monitor, monitor it mm -hmm. to make sure mm -hmm. that the most common thing that happens, which is clearance of the HPV and any okay. minor okay. changes that mm -hmm. might be there, make sure that actually happens. Mm -hmm. It is typically the case with cervical cancer that the wellness visit or the pap smear is not done over the course of several years. Yes. It's those cases that tend to develop into cervical cancer. Or even depending, like I said, on where a person is regionally throughout the world, sometimes they don't have access to the wellness visit um, or to doctors who perform the pap test. And so it's in those instances where cervical cancer has a chance to develop because there's no surveillance. There's no one keeping an eye out for things. But here in Ghana, <laughs> there are pap tests. <laughs> That's true, yeah. And so definitely, you know, I think it's important for women to become more aware that yes, right. it's important yeah. to come to get this test done. Test, test, test. It's important to get this test done. Early detection, they say, is the key to living a very healthy life. This has been Ladies Digest. This has just been part one of our HPV and, and, and pap smell test. Please join us for Heart 2 and we know you won't miss anything from it. Just stay tuned.